You know, 15 minutes is a great time. You can stretch your legs, get lots of air in the lungs, you get less drowsy. It's hard to sit down in a warm room like this with no circulation, no fresh air. You kind of get a little drowsy, so I didn't make the course longer because of that. Um, but, uh, <coughs> It's fine for me, but somebody might... Uh, I think most of you guys are okay as far as the, the temperature. and the, You know, it's a little stuffy, but I'm good. I wanted to talk to you about... I was talking to a gentleman during the break, and he mentioned to me about some things. And I indicated to him that these plants are going right outdoors in the springtime. As soon as it warms up enough, these things are going outside. I'm not going, I'm not a hobbyist indoor gardener. This is a means to get me some food for my family through the winter. That's all it is. It's a vehicle to take me where I want to go. But as soon as I get warm weather, like for example, th this today has been warm now if it wasn't raining. Although I could stick these things out in the rain and they would work just fine. They work just fine with the sunshine in the rain. It's no big deal. You can stick them out there. And that's where these things will be going. As soon as this, the winter time, or should I say, the uh, cold weather is over. Even if I was to get a few days stretch where I know I'm going to have good sunshine, I'll break all the rules and I'll take those things in the winter time and I'll stick them out in, in, the, uh, in the sunshine. Now, when you get ready to take these things into the sunshine in the springtime and you know you're going to leave them out there, you got to do something called hardening off. And what that means is that you don't just take the plants and stick it out in the hot sun and let it bake there and think, oh, okay, here, this plant's going to do just fine. An indoor plant going to the outside in the hot sun is going to usually need to be left in the shade for a couple of weeks. And then what I would do is bring it out of the shade for two hours the first day, the next couple of days, four hours, keep doubling it, the next couple of days, six, eight, until I get the full spectrum after two weeks. You follow me? So you want to kind of phase it in on the sunshine on those things. Another thing he mentioned to me was about seeds and genetically modified. And I don't know if you guys know this, but most of the food that you eat is genetically modified now. And, and that's tragic. Because you're getting health problems now that you didn't have 20 years ago. But this is not a class about that. Although I could start preaching, but I'll get off my soapbox. None of the seeds in the, these companies that I have listed, where to buy seeds, these guys, um, the first uh, Johnny seeds, they actually take an oath that they don't use those type of seeds. Now, I do happen to know that none of the other companies use genetically modified seeds. The average person can't get genetically modified seeds, and here's the reason why that is. There's a patent on genetically modified products, seeds, and what happens is those companies will make you sign a contract, and generally they're dealing with a farmer who's going to buy thousands of pounds of their seeds, not some nickel and dime guy like me who just wants to go buy a pack. They're going to sell you, you know, a bunch of bags like that of those seeds and make you sign a contract and hold you to some really strict regulations and they can come throw you in jail if you break those things. The, the average person doesn't have to worry about that. The seeds that you see that have been around for a hundred years or so, the small seed companies that sell to the public, the general public, they're just fine. They're not using those things. But all the corn, all the wheat, the grains, it's all genetically modified today. And as a result, 20 years earlier than you should be getting those diseases, you're going to get them. It's very serious. There's a reason why I'm teaching this course that I don't really broadcast too much. There's a lot of things we couldn't talk about that I'm going to leave unsaid. But I think it is important to realize the times in which we live. 
if you go into the supermarket and you notice that the produce that you bought last year, that this year you're getting a lot less for your money. By the way, things generally tend on this earth to go up, not down. And I believe we're on a trend right now. Um, if we had a little more time, I might consider talking a little more about it. But I just want to say this, that there's a lot of information now about gardening that's, uh, is this mic not loud enough for you? Okay, there's a lot of information about gardening now that's flowing out there. You know, the, the population in America, on YouTube, if you type in gardening, you're going to get so many hits that you could never watch 1% of any of those videos. There's so many people out there, and they're all generally on there for the same reason, because they realize, they see the trends. They may not have all the knowledge that we do as Christians who believe in a loving God who's kind and wants everybody to flourish. They may not have all that knowledge, but they realize that there is, that we are on the verge of a stupendous crisis. So, As I said before, this is not really a seed uh, <clears throat> class, but I want to cover a few things. There are some things that I can make really easier on you um, that have to be covered in a hydroponics class. There's two types of growing medium that you plant your seeds in. We're going to cover that a little bit later. But I wanted to show you something. On lettuces, the seeds are so tiny, there's no way possible that you can really plant them according to the manufacturer's directions. Or you'd be starting today and still planting your seeds two weeks later. So I'm going to show you a little trick that I learned from a guy named Elliot Coleman. Now, all of my lettuces are doing really well and they're going to be ready to go into the cold frames, except for these spinaches. I've had a real problem over the years buying spinach and having spinach have a problem growing. Um, and there's ways of curing that. I've heard a 0.3% a mixture hydrogen peroxide water soak for a few minutes will actually oxygenate the seeds. I've never tried it, but I heard from a friend that did it. She said she was able to get 90% of her seeds to grow. And I use older seeds. I don't just buy new seeds every year. That's expensive. Now, the thing you're going to find when you like to use older seeds is you're going to find that some of those older seeds aren't going to germinate as well. But I want you guys to try that uh, you, you, you can look online and find out. It's really easy. You just type in hydrogen peroxide and seeds in Google and they'll, they'll tell you. It's basically, I think, uh, 10 parts water and one part hydrogen peroxide and you just soak the seeds for a few minutes roughly. Um, this is, I'm not saying I've done it because I haven't, but that, I think it probably would help and if my friend was right about what she said, then you could take old seeds and make them really go a lot better. But what I learned with lettuce seeds, because they're too small, they're like sand, you're not going to be able to space those things out. What you can do is take your peck and have, a, have it like a V. Do you see how that is? And then you start tapping the side and you just barely let a few seeds fall just like that and I can quickly do this whole tray just like that because I got a few light spots I'm sure you saw that and I'm I wanting to cure that so I'll plant a few and I'm not bothered by that I planted these a week ago and I'll come right in a week later and I'll plant some more on top of it I mean plants are very forgiving they'll allow you to do that <laughs> I don't care. I'll push the envelope as hard as I can get it. <laughs> it 
And all lettuces are that way. If you take and make a little V out of the pack and just move your hand just so you can get it. If you notice, see the spread ratio? I did that on these. See how good the spread ratio is on those? It's really good. They're sort of uniform and they're not perfect, but they're close enough for government work, as I like to say. You see how uniform these things are? Now these things are getting a little bigger, so they're a little thick. But if you notice, lettuce seeds, they're the hardest to plant because they're just so tiny and my eyes are not that good. Uh, a lot of you probably know where I'm coming from. This stand, by the way, I built this. Uh, this isn't glued together or anything. These are parts, I just cut them and stuck them together. I can take that thing apart and put it back together. This stand I built from Lowe's parts cost me $7.50. And this stand I built, it probably, I don't think it cost more than about that thing did. It might have cost seven or ten bucks. I don't remember exactly. But I'll tell you, I sure do like using it. And like I say, I'll only use it through the winter because I'm outside. There's nothing better than the sunshine uh, for plants. Oh, pardon me. So these seed companies, I like Johnny's and Jung the best. I'll really use from those guys. Now, as we get into this gardening course, I'm going to teach you what the most popular plants are nationwide, what people really love and they're using a lot of in each different realm. And we're going to cover that in another class. But the bottom line is that for cucumbers and tomatoes, seeds and such, and totally tomato, they're on the bottom. They have a wide variety of tomato plants. Now I like to have a selection because I'm after certain things when I grow tomatoes. I like canning tomatoes. I want to make my own tomato sauce, my own tomato paste. I make my own salsa. It's a lot healthier than that stuff you buy in the store. Another thing you'll be doing through the winter is you'll be planting fruit trees. Um, if there's enough interest, I may teach a class on that. I have a method of growing fruit trees that's incredible. This method, you can be growing, planting the tree this year and next year off of some of them. Uh, I didn't, you know, you, you usually get three years on a fruit tree minimum before it'll produce. But I have a method that you can grow it one year and that thing will produce. I grew an almond tree that grew so fast and so good that it produced nine almonds and it was only about eight months or a year old this year from the method that I use. I bought all my fruit trees from a company called Willis Orchard. They're in Georgia and I love their website. They have pictures and they, they've uh, got everything separated out the way you like it. Uh, whether it's apple, peach, pear, whatever kind of different thing, fig. And you can just click that link and then up you open up. They have pictures of all the different trees and you just go there and see what you like. And you want to order those in the middle of the winter. They'll be dormant uh, when you plant them. You want to plant them in the winter time. You don't plant them in the spring or the summer or the fall because that's not the way you do it. They need to be planted when they're dormant. Uh, there's a company I've listed, Specialty Dwarf Trees. It's called FastGrowingTrees.com. I love that website because I've bought, I've bought dwarf avocado trees and I love my, eating my own avocados. I actually ate an avocado about six weeks ago that I grew myself. And that plant, I had only had it for about um, two months, three months. Um, it's both. It's a dwarf. So you, you can take it indoors, which what I do is I put it in my greenhouse. Um, and I basically have taken a 55-gallon drum. I bought a $40 kit from Northern Tool, and I turned that thing into a wood-burning stove. And I heat my greenhouse, and I keep avocado trees. I've got navel seedless orange trees that are dwarf. They'll, usually they'll grow about 12 feet tall. It's a good size. It'll feed your family. I mean, it's not going to feed the community, but I, you know, 
I like to have food to feed the community, but I'm okay if it's a dwarf, if it's not going to produce just a, enough for my family, it's fine. I've got a banana tree that I bought from this company, and it's doing fine in my greenhouse. And, you know, I love growing dwarfs. They're so good because you buy them. If you take care of them and put them under lights, you can bring them in your house and put them under these type of lights. Um, they're just wonderful. Especially, I've always wanted an avocado tree. And this year was the first year I was able to make that happen. And by the way, that fastgrowingtrees.com, they'll, for a little bit extra, allow you to buy the warranty. So if you kill the tree, they'll give you another one. And I bought that because, you know, I'd never grown an avocado before. Deep water culture hydroponics. That's what this is right here. Um, as you can see, this system, uh, it's got a plant growing in your, in your little rock wool cube. These are rock wool cubes. So you'll basically take a seed and put it down in, inside of each one of the little holes. You probably can't see it here, but there's a little hole in these rock wool cubes. And they split apart into a little square like this. They're about an inch and a half square, and they go perfect in this, a two inch net cup. Now, what I'm gonna do with these We don't really have time to get too much into this particular, but I thought last night I would show you guys. I'm going to take a hole saw and, and mount these two inch net cups inside of this, and I'm going to plant. Have you ever seen those little small uh, peppers that look uh, orange, yellow, and red? that are sweet, that look like a jalapeno, but they're really sweet. Those things have like 20 times the vitamin C as I believe a bell pepper or something. I don't know the exact comparison, but I know they're really high in, in nutrients. So I decided I want a yellow, red, and orange, one of those little small pepper plants in each one of those, and I'm gonna grow them in one bucket. So I can have all, I love growing peppers. Those things are fantastic. And if you have those things, they'll keep you from getting scurvy, by the way. If you ever get a little deficient in your nutrient, you can eat those things. They're so chock full of good nutrients. I'm not actually gonna get too much into this because this was just a sideline. We're really gonna concern ourselves with this, this method here. But there's a lot of things you can do. That's a smaller net pot. There's different sizes of net pot. Um, this is the net pot, the thing that holds the plant. You can see the hydrotin here and the rock wool and then the net pot itself holding this. So there's different ways. Um, these plants right here are gonna be on the next picture. I don't have one of these in the bucket. But you could do it that way. That's a, a good tried and tested way. Here's the method that I'm doing here. It's nice and simple. You don't need a pump. All you need is a, an air pump, a fish tank pump. And basically what you do, you've got your bucket and then you have this tube right here that tells you your water level. And then you have the hydrotin inside of the top portion. Now let me show you here. We're gonna build one of these things. So what we'll do is we'll put our growing medium inside here, and then mount that down into that bucket just like that. And where's that? Here we go. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this kit. This is, uh, General Hydroponics Farm Kit and it's item number 4115. That's how you want to order these. Now you can buy these from a local store down in Asheville, fifth season, which is where I got this. And it'll give you all the parts. So all you really need is this and the bucket. Oops. You just need this 
in that bucket and then your growing medium and that's all you need. So it's, it's not a whole lot to be concerned with and I'm going to show you now how to put one of these together. So we've covered starter cubes. There's two different kinds. This kind is really good if you're going to do some smaller things. This is not really ideal for doing tomato plants. Um, so what I've used on a flowering and fruiting, do you know what I mean by that? When I say flowering and fruiting, you'll notice that on your paperwork, I believe I use that term flowering and fruiting plants. Those are your tomatoes, your cucumbers, and your bell pepper or any kind of pepper plants. Those basically they flower and they produce fruit. You want to use this for your seeds. And these are called starter cubes. You'll start your seedling in these things and then what will happen is when you see the roots start coming down you can just pop it inside of your growing medium. It's really easy. It's not hard. So that's what you want to use. You can use this. Um, there's people that say well you gotta do stuff with the pH with this and you do have to wet this first, but there's people that they like to go through a whole lot of stuff to, to use this, and I don't do any of that. I just put it in water, water it with water until the seed sprouts, and then I'll use a 50-50 mix of some hydroponic solution that I took out of the bucket from before, because I change my water out of those things every two weeks. I'll completely clean out each bucket and change out my water and I'll take that water and I'll mix it 50-50 and I'll use it to spray on these my seedlings that are coming up. So, but I like using this on your flowering fruiting which is tomatoes, peppers, and cucumbers. Now we're going to talk about hydroponic nutrients and I actually like this portion of it it's pretty easy. One thing I like about hydroponic growing is, is that you'll learn that the plants like a little bit different of a mixture, so I'm going to teach you what that is. Your flowering and fruiting plants will like, now what I have here you see the first thing is called Master Blend for 1838. You can get that from Morgan County Seeds and there's their phone number. It's on page 78 of their catalog and you can call them and order it and they'll send you uh, a 25 pound bag of this stuff. Next, you'll want to have uh, calcium nitrate which I buy in, I believe I bought a 50 pound bag from where did I get that? Crop Production Services there. They're in Hendersonville. And I also bought a 50 pound bag of magnesium sulfate for $18. Now don't go down to your drugstore and get magnesium sulfate which is Epsom salt because they're going to charge you, you know, what is it, five bucks for a little thing? I haven't bought them in so long but you can get a 50 pound bag of that stuff for $18. So that's what I do. I buy in bulk and I'll spend a couple more dollars and there's a reason behind that. Because if you buy this nutrient, then that nutrient's going to last you for so many years you will likely never have to buy it again for a very long time. This stuff theoretically, if you're just doing a small scale system like what I'm doing, it may be 20 years before I have to buy any more of that nutrient. And I'm going to show you um, how much it takes. It doesn't take very much for each plant. So what you do, you have all three of these substances which I have here. Here's the master blend that I bought from Morgan County Seeds. And what this is, master blend is it's made for hydroponic growing. It's completely balanced. It has all the micronutrients that your plants need and it's got all the nutrients that your plants need minus, minus two things. Magnesium sulfate, Epsom salt, and calcium nitrate. Now with calcium nitrate, 
You want to be careful with that stuff. When you buy it and you open the bag, you want to take a little bit out and keep it in some sort of a Tupperware. Here I've used uh, low-fat cottage cheese. And uh, I keep it sealed because if you take and open that bag of calcium nitrate and just stick it open in your garage, it's going to absorb all the water in the air and turn into a stone. So what I do, I'll open that bag and pour it into a five gallon bucket and stick the lid on it tightly. And I'll take out an amount I need, like this right in here is, is lasting me about a year. So I'll take out a small amount that I need, maybe half a cup or a cup, and I'll stick it in my little Tupperware and I'll use it out of there. And it stays dry. And I won't keep going into that five gallon bucket with the, the you know, majority of it so it doesn't want to absorb any water that way. You gotta be really careful about that. How to weigh the nutrients. This little scale here, that I have is wonderful. It's a 6.6 .6 pound, I believe. It costs about 17 bucks on uh, Walmart's website. And I give the item number on the paper. You can call them and just give them the item number and order it. If you don't have the internet, it's fine. And this little scale, it's really good. You can put, what we'll do, you're not going to be able to see, but I'm going to tell you everything that's going on up here. What I'm going to do is turn the scale on. It's battery powered and it zeroes itself right away. Now, you'll have to have some sort of a bowl to mix all your ingredients in. And what I do when I mix these three ingredients, I take a pile, I make three separate piles. And I'll show you why I do that. So once this thing is on, it says zero. I'll click it once and zero it. I'll put my bowl on it and it's going to read the weight of it. Now I'm reading in grams. So I'll click it again with the bowl on it to zero it out. There we go. And then the first thing I'm going to do is weigh my master blend. That is a slide out of sequence. Okay. Now, <clears throat> this is the formula for tomatoes, peppers, and cucumbers. You give them the same formula of this mixture I'm going to show you. For a five gallon bucket, which is what I'm going to be mixing this in, is I usually, in those things, I'll use about two and a half gallons of water. So I'll cut this formula in half. All right. If you've noticed here, right on the top, I put hydroponic fertilizer mix per five gallons. So what that means is that these plants are going to take a little over half of that. So my mixture is going to be a little light. But what you do, tomatoes, peppers, and cucumbers, they all love the same formula. You have six grams of master blend. Remember, I'm cutting it in half because I'm only using a little, I'm using two and a half gallons in each one of those. So six grams master blend, six grams of calcium nitrate, and, six, and three grams of Epsom salt. So we'll come over here. Yes, I always keep it sealed. Um, this, it's been in a bag with a twisty tie for a long time, but I'm just going to stick them in a five gallon bucket soon here with the bag and all. And, uh, and then I'll have little separate smaller containers with stuff that I can go dip out of. I never like to go in my main bag. I'll take smaller containers and use out of that. So what we're going to do, I want to get six grams of master blend. So I'll put it on one side and start pouring it in. I'm just, I'm tapping this spoon with my finger to get just enough 
And then what happens? I go six, okay, and I'm done. I've got a little pile of this there. And the reason I make three separate piles is because if I go over on one, now while it's still counting, I'm going to zero it out. So now I can do six grams again. It's a really nice feature with this thing. It zeroes it out every time you hit this button. So you can add more and more of your nutrient and you're only worried about that portion. So now we're going to do six grams of calcium nitrate. Okay. Now You'll find in the hydroponics world that every time they put a label on something and call it hydroponics, you're going to get the price jacked up on you unnecessarily. What I'm teaching you is the cheapest method to grow with that will last you the longest time. You could feed your family with this thing for probably 20 years. You're going to spend an investment of maybe 60 bucks, $65, and if you if you scale that out over 20 years, you do the math, that's pretty good math. That's pretty cheap food. This has all the complete balanced nutrient that you need for your plants. There's, if, if there was any more nutrient in here, your plants couldn't take it up. So this is a complete balanced diet. It's not something that's like, remember we talked about inorganic, where it's something that makes the plants spurt unnaturally this is not like that this is hydroponics it's completely different this basically provides a complete and total nutrient package for your plant exactly what that plant needs and we're going to talk about lettuce next lettuce needs a different formula we'll use the same products but in different um, in different weights so now I'm going to put Epsom salt let me zero it out so we've done six grams master blend, six grams calcium nitrate, and we're going to do three grams of Epsom salt. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this little mixture here. The reason why I have three separate piles, I'm going to pass this around and hopefully you guys can see. Do you see that? I know you may not be able to. See how I have three separate piles? There's a really good sound reason why I do that. Because if one of those piles I'm putting in the scale and I get too many grams, I can easily dip in that pile and take it out. And then I can shake it again in until it's the number that I want. And I found that works really well for me. Now, what I've just done is, once I have this mixture, I'll take my five gallon bucket and in a minute here, I'm going to show you, actually maybe, here, let's do this. This is your water level line. If I fill this thing up to the white line, that means I have approximately two and a half to roughly three gallons, somewhere in there. It's fine, the, that mixture, that formula that I've showed you, if you fill it up to the white line, that'll be perfect. Now if you come in there a couple of weeks later and you notice the plant has drawn down on that water, but it, it's before your two week time to change out the water, then don't add more chemical fertilizer here. You just add more water. You keep adding water. Because that plant and that formula is going to give everything that plant needs to thrive for the next two weeks. And even if it drinks up a bunch of that, you don't want to be adding any more of that formula. All you add is just pure water. Now if you have tap water, you've got to let that stuff sit until the chlorine's out of it. And you've got to watch out on your pH a little bit. I have well water. 
I know a lot of you here have well water, so you don't have, that's not a concern. I've never really worried about my pH on this. And I want you to uh, think about something. With pH, have you ever seen plants where there's a couple of those leaves on those plants that are actually curling? Did you notice that? There's a curl on those leaves? That's because the pH wasn't right during that growing phase of that leaf. So if you ever see a plant in the ground, same principle, and you notice like I had some sunflower plants last year that had a leaf curl and they looked like they were from Mars. I couldn't believe it. And I couldn't figure out what happened and I finally realized it was the pH was wrong on that soil. So the next year, I'll be looking to bring some wood ashes, something natural that I can take and make more alkaline. Lettuce, this, this nutrient mix is the same. It's per five gallons, but you're gonna cut it in half again. So you'll take five grams of master blend, five grams of calcium nitrate, and two and a half grams of that Epsom salt. Now you can go, you can go three, but once you hit the three, just take a little tiny bit out. Even if it stays at the three, that's fine. And that's what lettuce likes. The main things you're gonna be growing hydroponically are these four items. Your, your three flowering and fruiting and your lettuces. That's, that's gonna cover a wide variety of vegetables for your family. Assembly of parts. I'm going to show you how to put together one of these buckets. What I did, I got this bright idea one day. I thought I'd go to Lowe's and buy those cheap buckets because, you know, I wasn't too thrilled about spending the amount of money on a food grade hydroponic bucket. These things cost $8.50. So what I did, I went to Lowe's and I bought one of these cheap buckets. Let me hook up my drill. I'm going to tell you what happened. Every time in life that I've ever tried to go cheap, I've always went out and spent twice the money to fix my mistake. You're going to need a three-quarter drill bit. This, is, this bit is made for boring through wood. You can buy them at uh, Lowe's. They're fairly inexpensive. What I had done, when I drilled my hole, I always drill my hole two inches up. I'll draw a little, a little small pencil mark there. I'm going to show you. And, uh, and I'll put my drill there and I'll drill the hole. If you guys notice, the bucket shattered. Now, it might be, maybe it was just my technique at the time. This bucket's not going to do that on me because the plastic is, is uh, better. One problem with buckets like this is if you get any light inside the bucket and you get algae problems, if you notice I got algae on two of these, I'm going to have to fix that. You don't want algae because algae will start absorbing your nutrients and then your plant won't get the proper nutrient it's supposed to. So I will fix that. What I'll do is I'll take those rocks that have algae on them and I'll put new hydrotin over it and then I'm going to take a plastic black, uh, any kind of thick black plastic, make a circle and I'm just going to put it right over the top. I'm going to cut like a circle and a line and then just wrap it right around that so no light can get in there. That'll stop the algae. 
and I left these things the way I did. I didn't bring in perfect stuff here because I want you guys to have object lessons and I want you to have experience. You may be able to get away with buying the cheap buckets from Lowe's, but try to be better about drilling your holes than I was. Because you're going to want to have this more than likely inside. We're going to be, you know, this is a winter gardening course. These things don't leak. I can make a hundred of these things and these won't leak. And that's pretty good for the job that they're accomplishing. So, I'm going to come up from the bottom and draw a two inch. Now you see this? I want to go right in the center on line with that thing. I'm going to draw me a circle there at about the two inch mark. Doesn't have to be exact, just close. Cut, a, cut away the, the uneven portions of it real quick. Okay, that should be. Alright. Okay, so now I've got my hole. Thank you. Okay. Now what we want to do is take this little grommet and just put that right in that hole. It takes a little work and you want it to be watertight. And ideally, when you drill that hole, you want to go nice and slow. I went a little too fast. And if you drill that hole and ream it out just right, it will, this thing won't leak. If you do get one that leaks, that's not good. The price is in your notes. It, it should be. It's 15 bucks. Okay, once I have that grommet in there, some people like to take a little bit of uh, olive oil and put on this. I kind of wish I had some, but it's not a necessity. I'll just kind of work this thing in here. And I'll push it all the way down. See, and roughly, I got it to where that, that thing can fall down and hold it a little bit. Now, they give you a clip for this, I'm not going to do any more drilling because I'll just use this to hold it for now. But this clip, you can drill a small hole right here and just stick that clip in there and that'll hold it as well. That, I have the clip in all those. I don't want to rummage around for my drill bit. I may do it when I'm finished. Okay. That'll get that portion of our bucket ready. Now what we need to do is put together these parts. Now, what happens with this, 
this everything everything fits in this sleeve in this sleeve the pointed end faces down I don't know if you guys can see there's a pointed end that's got an angle cut out of it that faces down and it's going to go through the bottom of this just like this which as you can see I'm going to have to cut another hole so what I like to do Somebody once told me about using a cannon to kill a fly on a wall. So this may be a little overkill. These are metal snippers. But it gives me a nice clean cut on this plastic. And it certainly is overkill, but it's all good. So what I'll do, I'll just guesstimate it because I can, I can cut it to fit what I need. There's a certain way I'm cutting this. I'm going to show you in a minute here. To get this sleeve to fit through it. Okay, that's perfect. If you notice how I've cut it, I cut it directly in the center and I just take it out of the center of two of these little things and this thing will fit nice and tight in here and it's held perfectly. That's what you want. That's that portion. Now what happens is this thing is so simple. Whoever invented this is a, is a genius because it's really quite a simple procedure now, one thing you want to do is I always make sure that this, is, that this air tube, which is this smaller tube, is plugged in really good because when I stuff this thing down in the sleeve, I don't want this coming out because I'm going to have to rework my whole bucket. So, one thing that I am going to have to do is cut some of this off. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm also going to have to cut some of this off the top of this thing and I'll tell you why. When I first built these things I had the the tube was coming up like this and the little round tube I want to show you, you know a picture says a thousand words everything fits together just like this when I first built these things this thing was sticking up like this because this thing was budding on the bottom of the bucket and it was spitting water all over my basement floor and everything and I thought oh no I can't have that uh, not to mention as you notice those those air pumps aren't working 24 7 they're only on 30 minutes on 30 minutes off you don't need them to run 24 7 so what I did I realized right away um, that I needed to cut some off of this setup to bring that thing down to where it rests right on top of the growing medium. You see how far it is in there like that? Nice and tight, nice and directly on top of the growing medium. And now I can sit that thing over a shag carpet and it would not get one molecule of water out of there. It doesn't. It doesn't leak at all. You can see there's no water anywhere to be seen because those things rest directly on top of my growing medium. So remember when you get when you get it without cutting it it's going to be way up in the air like that and it's just going to be a mess. So here's what you want to do. Here's my notes. You're going to want to cut an inch and a half off the white dripper line, this this line right here, not the air line. You don't cut any off the air line. You cut an inch and a half off the white dripper line. So we're going to do that. Thank you. 
Okay? And then on this brown line, your, the brown sleeve, you're going to want to cut an inch and a quarter. So I've got a little mark here, and what I'll do is I'll pull my airline, I'll pull this thing down way there so I can get the airline out of the way. And I'm just going to merely cut this thing. I've got a nice sharp razor knife, and I'm just going to work this thing back and forth. I'm not in a hurry. I've got plenty of time. And I don't want to cut myself, so I'm just going to be real careful and cut it nice and even. And there we go. It's perfect. Now that thing will rest that thing right on top of that growing medium, the hydrotin. But this thing will still stick way up in the air, so I want to cut an inch and a quarter off of the top of this. You don't cut the inch and a quarter off the, the beveled edge. You leave that. That's what faces down is your beveled edge. So we'll take an inch and a quarter. And I'll just work it real easy, like I'm taking my time. This razor knife will go through this stuff really easy. There we go. Boom. You know what? That's close enough. Okay, now when I get this thing all put together, that thing will lay flat inside and it won't get any drips anywhere but where it's supposed to be going, on the plant. So, now of course we're going to pretend I've already got my nutrient solution. Now when I throw that nutrient solution in the, in the bucket, I'll take a nice big spoon that I have. That's, uh, it's a commercial spoon for stirring and I'll just stir that stuff about five minutes and it'll go down to nothing. It'll all dissolve completely. So we're going to stick this here and put this thing together. Now first the growing medium. I like to use hydrotin. You can really use anything you like. There's all kinds of things on the market. The reason I like this stuff is it's just clay balls. And if your hands are wet, you've been working with plants or working with water, this stuff won't hurt you. There's sharper stuff on the market that if you use it, it'll kind of cut you a little bit if your hands are, have been wet for a long time, you've been working with your plants or something. So I like this. It's very benign. It won't hurt you. It's a good medium to grow in. It's a good foundation for the plants. It doesn't do anything to the pH. Now, you'll want to have washed this first, but just for purposes of the demonstration, I'm not going to wash this. There's a little bit of dust. It's not going to hurt anything. I'll wash it when I get home. But re remember, you want to wash this first. Just rinse it outside. Take it. I'd pour it in a five-gallon bucket and just rinse it until the, the little red dust is gone. Three or four good rinsings and you'd be done. It's not too bad. Okay. Now let's put this thing together the rest of the way. You have to have your growing medium in there before you put this device. And remember, you really want to make sure that this is going all the way down. This air tube is going down into this bottom fixture right here. And once you got that, you're fine. You just work it real gently down into your sleeve, past each one of these little holders, and just like that. 
Okay. And I like to press this thing down real hard. Okay. And that is basically what I have over here. If you notice, the growing medium is down low enough. It's about two inches so the water won't come up out of the sides. And you guys can all come and look at this. And this is real easy. You can just take this up just like that. And I want to show you one thing. You'll find this kind of neat. Let's see if I can get... Look at how clean and white these roots are. I want to show you how clean and white these roots are. They do real well. Anytime you have a plant like this, it's... See how clean and white those roots are? That is going to be one good plant. Now, I don't need all these pumps, but that's a class for another time. Um, the tomato plants are probably going to have about five times the roots that this thing does, but I don't want to lift those because I'm afraid they'll fall over. But this is basically, in essence, what happens in your growing medium. You can see the roots coming out of the sides. This growing medium anchors these roots really well. And then what happens is the plants, you see the roots coming out of the growing medium? Those actually absorb oxygen. They're not really made for absorbing nutrient as much per se. But if you see the plant sends down roots really far to go into that growing uh, solution and it absorbs that way. So the plant actually converts its roots into two different functions. So that's what you have when you have a setup like this. How long has that one been growing? Um, I've got it marked the date. I'll tell you in a second. Let me just put it back where it was. It says November 11. So what will really probably astound you is this big tomato here. I'm just so impressed with this thing. Um, if you look at the tag on that thing, it says October 29. So let's just forget about that because that was the end of October. So all of November and we're three weeks in December. So what, this thing is eight or nine weeks old, roughly. And look at how beefy. This, I mean, this thing, I want you guys to come look at this. This is one hefty tomato plant. Just one or two things left. I like using this. Remember I talked about the nutrient that you can use to water your soil? Uh, the professionals use something called a dosomatic injector. I don't care for using those because those things cost a couple hundred bucks. And I, you know, if I had a huge operation going and I was making money with this gardening, which I probably never will, I like giving away the stuff. Um, I might consider using that. But this is something you can buy re relatively inexpensive. And it's got a little dial here that you can set one teaspoon per gallon. So you can use this to water all your plants everywhere. And I'll tell you, I want you to try that little mixture over there that I told you about, the urea, the potash, and the bone meal and see if you like it. And you can use something like this. It's real inexpensive to buy and water all your plants. I want to thank you, each and every one of you, for coming. Um, we're going to stop the video now. And uh, if there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer a few questions. Now, we're, we're only going to go for...